suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians, and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Please! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Stone Da Petit with your host, as always, it's me, Kip. And across the computer pond, we got my boy, CB. CB, how are you, brother? Dude, doing great now that I'm finally recovering from that move this past week. Yeah, so for those that are listening but have been following along on our social media, Chris and I, once roommates, um, recording studio in a house that we, we procured together, um, we have gone our separate ways. I'm coming to you from the what will one day become the new Stone Depetite Studios out here in the suburbs. But Chris and I are no longer roommates. Chris, I'm so sorry. I know you were a great one. Yeah, well, that's what they all say. Actually, nobody says that. Um, but we have a, a great new episode. And the reason we're coming to y'all virtually with one another is because our guest today is also coming to us virtually from Orlando, Florida. We have the Mr. Ryan Forrestal. Forrestal. Forrestal? Yes, Forrestal. You had it right the second time. It's perfect. That's the kind of the theme of this podcast. Player B is always better than player one. Well, Ryan is the founder of Blunt Bowls. Um, we've teased it on our social media, but it's pretty much like a tobacco packing apparatus that you can add to your bowls to alleviate the need for the full blunt experience while still getting that same taste and the blunt experience in your everyday bowl. Um, you know, Ryan has kind of made a name for himself in the cannabis industry, not only through word of mouth, but also through product placement. You know, you put this thing in just about every kind of bowl and it's ready to spark and go party. But we're excited to learn more about Ryan's company, <clears throat> his product. But before we do that, I need to do a quick shout out and pay our quick bills. Chris, who do we love? We love Callie's first today. Yes, we do. We love our friends over at Cali's Cannabis. Christie's that, you know, we're just coming off a Thanksgiving break and a Thanksgiving move. What better location to go pick up that CBD or THC solve or ointment that you may need for the lower back aches, whether you need flour, cartridges, fucking wax, no matter what you need, our friends over at Cali's Cannabis, they've got you covered. They have fantastic deals of the day, as well as a rewards program. And then they have three locations spread out across the metro area. They have locations at 8th and Canosa Court for our friends right off of Federal in between 6th and downtown. And then we have the location in the Rhino District where we frequent the one at 31st and Larimer. And they have just about everything you need. We've been talking heavy carts recently. They've got what you need. Um, and then their third location is up there in North Glen. Fuck if I know the exact address, but our friends in the Burbs, y'all know where to find them. They got great cartridge deals out the door. And last but not least, you know we love our friends over at Seed and Smith. I was harping on cartridges just there, Chris. Well, because of their two locations that they have, personal cannabis dispensaries um, at Oakland Street out there in Commerce City. And then, of course, their, uh, I guess, flagship shop up there, 1413 Heckler Way. Um, they have had killer deals all holiday season long, Chris. We've, everyone knows that we love that dart pen, but it doesn't stop there. They have fantastic flour. They have their own wax. And then talking cartridges, if you're looking for just the everyday play the hits, they've got you. Edibles, sodas, cartridges. They've got everything you may need. Fucking tinctures and whatever. 
they've got it. Uh, so check out seedandsmith.com to find out what location is nearest you. And if you're looking for their product, but maybe don't want to frequent the Seed and Smith locations, they have that all available on their website of where you can grab dark cartridges, where you can grab their flour, their wax, they've got it all covered. So go to seedandsmith.com, load up on what we're smoking. We're not professionals, but by God, do we love the plant. Woo! Ready, Chris? That was a good one. I felt good about it. Yeah. That. yeah right. Let's kick this virtual party off. All right, Ryan. Mm-hmm. So we like to start every episode kind of the same way. Um, Chris, I'll let you go ahead and take the ones and twos. I'm going to puff on this pen real quick. Cheers, boys. Cheers. All right. Yeah, Ryan, what we like to ask our guests are, are you a transplant or a native to Colorado? Neither in this case. I have visited recently Denver. It was gorgeous. It was absolutely beautiful. And I hope to someday transplant myself there. But as of now, neither. Yeah, we're full. We're full. Yeah, no more room, (laughs) no vacancy. Sorry. uh, So where are you coming from? Uh, Originally, I'm from Rhode Island. So I'm a New England boy, but I moved down to Florida about 16 years ago. So at some point, you have to kind of just claim it as where you're from. So at this point, Central Florida, just outside of Orlando. Home of Disney World. Yeah, it's pretty much what everyone knows it for, for sure. Jean yeah. shorts and meth. <laughs> yeah, you pretty much all you nailed it. <laughs> We're big on stereotypes here on this pro on this podcast. Yeah. Right um, it home. There you go. <laughs> well, what led you? I mean, you how long were you in Rhode Island? What what led you to Central Florida? Was it in fact a prescription pill market that took you from Providence down or what? <laughs> No prescription. No, you know, it was that my my uh, eventual detest of winter just in my early 20s. Um, I lived in Newport at that point. And Newport's a really cool town in the summer, but in the winter, pretty much they roll up the sidewalks, all the businesses shut down and there's nothing to do. And um, I've been a musician since I was really, really young. And uh, one of my friends that I was I was close with, he became a musician for Disney and he moved he had moved down here into this area and and he was like, you should come down. You should see how it is. You know, you didn't, I didn't have any significant roots, marriage or kids or anything like that. So it was a good time to try something new if I was going to. And uh, it came down and then the rest is history. I've been here since. So, so you're life. kind of a journeyman musician and found your roots in Florida. That's not too shabby of a, I guess, a path. Yeah, you know, I've been playing since I was real young. I can't say that when I got here, it was with the intention of, of specifically playing, but I certainly have played a lot since I've been here. Um, what, but yeah. What's, what's your instrument? Drums. Drums. Yeah, I've been a drummer since I was about six years old. Fuck Love yeah. it. Nice. Yeah. In fact, I want to give a quick shout out to my friend, Eric. He's, the, he's our mutual friend, the one that you know from the band Lettuce. If people, if you don't know about the band, let us check them out. They're the preeminent funk band. They're the greatest, amazing. And Eric Bloom is the trumpet player. He's the most innovative trumpet player in the world. I, I grew up with him. We lived together my senior year of high school. His parents were like my parents, and um, I have so much respect for him. But yeah, he's uh, he's our mutual friend that said, you know, you got to check this out. And I'm excited that I finally got to do it. Be on this show with you. This is great. That's awesome. So you mentioned, you know, the music wasn't, and shout out to the Bloom crew. You know, we love Lettuce. Shout out to Paul and the whole family. They were on the podcast not too terribly long ago talking about their wine company, but yeah, I yeah. digress. Um, yeah, shout out Benny and Zoy. Everyone knows that we love their natty wines. Um, yeah, so you mentioned that you were not necessarily on the hunt to be the next fucking Phil Collins or whatever it may be. You know, you just wanted to, what was it that I guess, shifted you from whatever the day job was into blunt bowls. What is the day job prior to creating blunt bowls that kept, you know, the lights on the, the direct prior. So after I moved down here, I, I had a couple of jobs. I ended up working in, in the insurance industry and I worked at an insurance oh, agency. I met a lot and, of co- college football players with hurt knees, eh? Bob, eh? <laughs> wrong, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of, lot of wrong, uh, former yeah, wrong, uh, athletes. <laughs> wrong type of insurance but I, yeah I, I did a lot of like home and auto insurance i did that for a long time i was actually in that industry for about 13 and a half years oh, and uh it was it was not fun uh yeah no i i <laughs> learned i learned a lot in that time i learned you know you can make a lot of money and have a really solid career and you think that that 
what you'll get from that will be enough to compensate for it. But I learned that, yeah, after that much time, all the things I had, I was willing to sacrifice to just be happy at whatever it was I had to do the majority of my day. And insurance really wasn't it. Um, I left that industry and I started acting. Um, when I was really young, I did some theater type stuff, a little bit of acting, but I knew someone in, in a band that I was playing in that was acting. And he would tell me about these, these gigs that he would go on. And, and, and I knew he wasn't really, not to, he was a great guy and very talented, but I didn't think he was any more talented than I was. And I felt like, okay, if he's having all these cool experiences and shooting these furniture commercials with Cindy Crawford on the beach and <laughs> I'm like, I think I could do that. So for about four years, I was in film, I was in TV, I was in commercials, and I did a lot of really, really cool acting stuff um, and had an amazing time doing that. During that time is when I came to the idea that I had uh, with Blumples and kind of worked on the development while I was still doing a lot of my acting stuff, a lot of spokesperson stuff and things of that nature. Um, and now it's finally at a point where Blumples is pretty much the the main thing I have, you know, so much activity with it that it's hard not to, to be able to break away and do any acting stuff. You have to commit too much time. Well, so, I oh, go ahead, Chris. So did you, did you come up with kind of blunt bowls because you enjoyed smoking blunts as a, as a <laughs> marijuana smoker or like, do we grow up just pounding blunts or you what, know, what's the deal? Yeah. What does your ashtray look like growing up? <laughs> You know, it's uh, it, I was I was generally a, a bowl smoker because uh, it was just it was always easy. You know, it was about the convenience because the, the act of rolling, if you're not in a place where you can do it or you're not that good at it when you're young, whatever, um, or you have inferior tools to work with, like a shitty piece of paper or a bad piece of wrap, whatever, um, a bowl just always works. You just pack it in and you smoke it. That's the end of that. So I've generally been a bowl smoker. But with blunts, I liked blunts and I could roll blunts, but I didn't really roll blunts because it was just a lot of weed to be kind of committed to one project. And it was a lot and the, the amount of tobacco and I, I didn't always love the experience. The tobacco wasn't always that good. Um, but what ultimately drove me to there was really one experience. I'd seen a lot of blunts rolled in my time, but I was leaving for a UFC fight with a bunch of guys that I was going there with. And there was like 10 of us. And one of them was like, yo, let's, let's roll a blunt. He was really, everyone was so excited about this blunt. So it was this big a shit blunt. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> it was one backwards and he, he had to really carefully cut it. It was really dry. And so he was like licking it a lot and spinning and rubbing it in. And it was like, Oh God, now this is before COVID. So this isn't even right. like, Oh no, COVID this is before. So everyone was not worried. But still, so much saliva. And then you know, he puts all the filler tobacco on the table and someone hit it and it just shot everywhere. So it was just back all over the floor, all over the table, pain in the ass. And then everyone's got this broken up weed. And as he's putting it in, he's having to pick pieces of it out of his mouth and because he's licking it and stuff. And then as he's rolling it, he can't get it to stick to him itself. So it's just taken forever. We need to leave. This process has gone on for too long. And so finally, this book gets finished and we all smoked it. It was just, you know somewhat of a high, but it was so much process. I was like, there's got to be. You got to get a blunt roll on your crew. Yeah, yeah, you know, right? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was just a bad experience. Now, yeah, in some cases, someone could have probably turned that one piece into like a paper, you know, an airplane that would have been amazing. <laughs> right. There's always that in, one artist. <laughs> yeah, he's, they're so good. But in, in this crew, unfortunately, there wasn't. So it didn't immediately come to me. I actually had a different idea. Ultimately, it came to what it is now as kind of the perfect solution, or at least what I felt would be the perfect solution for the situation where there isn't a good rap or there isn't anyone there that's sufficient at rolling a blunt or you just don't have the time or the amount of weed it takes to roll one or you know there's just a lot of good reasons why this actually works a bit better for yeah, the I mean, purpose it, it creates the concept of you can kind of take the blunt to the dome without being a full blunt smoker is the concept that i gathered from it you know it's almost like a little parachute you tuck inside of your bowl you can see it on our instagram page at stone underscore appetite or at blunt bowls and you know it's because it is it feels like you, you took off the end of the blunt and you lined the weed with it but you're eliminating that second effort so i do appreciate you doing that um i didn't mean to disparage your friend who's big into mma but shitty at blunt rolling that's no all. no no he deserves it um so now <laughs> This is what they look like, just to kind of give you, the, give you the, uh, the visual of it. So if you haven't seen it on the website, it looks like this. It's a nice, soft, really, really high quality piece of tobacco. You take pretty much any normal pipe, I have like a couple here, um, but they're 
the standard kind of spoon pipes. You put it on top like this and you just press it in to the bowl cavity and it lines the inside of the bowl. That hole that's in the center lines up with the hole at the bottom. You can use this as a screen too. Um, but then you just pack, you pack your weed in there. You light from the edge and you're, you're able to control how much tobacco